You can't pray for nobody else unless you're secure in your own prayer life. The only time somebody asks you, will you pray for me, and you get nervous, is the devil makes you think about all the stuff you hadn't been doing. And you really not don't think in yourself, I'm ready to pray for you. That's why if they ask you to pray for them in the grocery store, it ain't that you so embarrassed. You, two things, you might be a little embarrassed. Then number two, you just wasn't ready at that point. Beloved, welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I, I'm so excited that you tune in wherever you may be around the world now, and you tune in to Power in the Word. And, and, and I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, uh, get on the internet, let people know that we're on the air right now, and let's get ready to be imparted to with the Word of Faith. I, I want to thank God for you and all of my partners, all of you who, who send me letters and email me and send in a little something to keep us on the air because without you we couldn't be doing this we're reaching the world because of people like you now let's get ready to go into the sanctuary to a live worship service where we're imparting the word of faith like never before revelation is going to be flowing get a bible a pen and a notebook and get ready to experience the life god bless you number three I have to spend time in the word of god number four i must fast then number five i'm gonna have to do some praying I'm going to have to commit myself, watch this, to a lifestyle of prayer. It's a lifestyle. You can't pray for people unless you pray to them. You can't pray for nobody else unless you're secure in your own prayer life. The only time somebody asks you, will you pray for me, and you get nervous, is the devil makes you think about all the stuff you hadn't been doing. And you really not don't think in yourself, I'm ready to pray for you. That's why if they ask you to pray for them in the grocery store, it ain't that you so embarrassed. You, two things, you might be a little embarrassed, then number two, you just wasn't ready at that point. But if you stayed, Sometimes I'm talking with people and you know, right on Wednesday night or something, they say, Doc, I know you're busy. I know you got to study for the night. I said, man, if I got to study tonight, what I'm gonna do? Them people in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. You, you have to get in a place, even as a believer, where you walk in this. I keep telling you, believers aren't supposed to be looking for miracles. Stay with me now, because we supposed to already be blessed. So this is something we're supposed to walk in. You ought to be able to shake the preacher at 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, give him a few minutes, and he get himself together, he ought to be able to minister to you. It's like the doctor in the trauma room of the hospital. He don't have time when you come in there, that joke going to bust you in the head, and the axe still sitting in the corner of your head, to be in there going to search the medical books and see how we remove the axe properly. <laughs> He got to dive on in, get elbow deep in blood and guts, and know what he's doing, because he got to walk in this. Look at somebody say, you got to walk in this. You got to walk. Oh, y'all ain't with me this month. Three or four folks tell me, you got to walk in this. You can't wait the trouble come to get ready for trouble. You got to already be ready when trouble show up at the door. One day, uh, me and all the boys, they was home this time, and one of my good friends, he came by the house, and he saw us in the yard. He drove up the driveway real fast. He got out of the car when he stopped. He said, Doc, that boy of yours, he's talking about my older son that time. 
He said, Doc, that boy ain't even moved. That boy told him, look, man, I ain't got to run from you in my own yard. Y'all missing me. Don't miss me. What was he saying? I'm at home. This mine. You ain't finna come up here and run nothing. I said, then that boy know, man, I got enough stuff up in here. We seen you back out there. You think it was Kuwait. Rather tat tat and all the cats scatter. <laughs> but he, where was he? In a place of confidence. He knew where he was. He knew he was in a place of provision, protection, and everything else he needed. So he knew at this point, I ain't got to run because I got something surrounding me. I got something with me that's able to handle any situation and circumstance. We already ready. We waiting on you. What you want to do? Number five, I must spend time running in. Number six, I must give, make giving a priority. I must make giving a priority. Too many people seeking after things. When God wants to set it up with the things, looking for you. He says, seek ye first. Kingdom of God. Y'all finish it. And all these are going to be done. So many people are running after things yeah. when if you just show God he's numero uno, yeah. Yeah. Right. everything you need gonna start looking for you. It'll get yeah. a point in your life where you say, I don't want that right now. I ain't asked for that. Yep. Jesus. You'll be thinking about stuff and it'll just show up. So now, I ain't got but a few minutes left. But look, number one, I got to understand my sonship. How do I become a son and a daughter of God? Boy, that's a bad piece. How do I become a son and a daughter of God? Let's go to John, the gospel this time. Chapter 1 at verse 12. John, the gospel. Chapter 1, verse 12. Say it with me while we travel in this word. The devil is not my daddy. I am a son or daughter of God. Now listen to me, daughters. Every time I say I'm a son, I want y'all saying a daughter because you's no man. If you have female genitalia, you are a woman. If you have male genitalia, you are a man. Do I need to explain genitalia? What he gave you when you got here. You still got it with us. They, they can cut stuff from here and put it there. Still ain't gonna work like that. You just got something. Hallelujah. It's okay to laugh, but Mary Hart do it good like a medicine. It's just the truth. Tell, tell three people tell them, say, keep it real. You know we know. Too many confused folks out here. I rebuke the spirit of confusion right now. I'm going to say it again. I rebuke the spirit of confusion right now. So when I say sons, you know, I know I'm a man. I'm going to say son, but you daughters, say daughter. Come on, let's do it now. I am a son of God. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. The Bible just refers to mankind. You know, the spirit is nude of gender. It doesn't have a female or male spirit. Uh, 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 you know, in the spirit, there's no female and male. It's nude of gender. That's why when you go to heaven, he say, won't be no married and giving him marriage. Mm -hmm. Won't be no intercourse or intimate activity in heaven. The only intimate activity in heaven going to be, we're going to be worshiping around the throne. So if you're going to get intimate, you better go on down here. Get your wife or husband and do your thing. Somebody say hallelujah. Y'all got my scripture? John chapter 1 at verse 12. How do I become a son of God? Ready to read it. T. 
to as many, watch this, number one, as received him. As received him. So I have to receive my son or my daughtership. Just like on Christmas, you don't struggle to open your gift. You tear the box open. Some of y'all big family, you tear open box didn't even have your name on it. Y'all out there arguing, that's my box, give me. But nonetheless, what did you do with that gift? If it was your birthday and I gave you something, you just gonna receive it. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to earn it. You just. So the first qualification for me being a son or daughter of God is just receiving it. You, you, you could be adopted. Now, I don't want to get too far into this. And if the people never told you that, they weren't, that those were not your real mother and father, you wouldn't know it. So right now, when I ask you your name, you can tell me your name because you got confidence in that. Why? Because you received it from somebody who told you that. That's right. Amen. Somebody told you that was your name. Yeah. Then watch this. Somebody told you that was your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your cousin. Amen. And as long as they was giving you that bottle, you just was receiving it. Yeah. Now you grew up knowing now, according to what they told you, who you were. Right. Amen. And, and it was so simple to you just received it. You didn't argue with them. You didn't try to fight with it. Do this. Go, reach out right quick. You just received it. So the first requirement is I just got to receive it. I got to quit listening to the TV, the radio, all these confused history stories. That's good, Holy Ghost. I'm going to say it just like this. See, the Bible that you're holding in your lap or on your electronic device is a story. It's a history book and a story, mother, of the people, the family that worship the great God I am. Because you know people were worshiping anything. Yeah. Just like no fire, water, right, trees. Right. You, you can go anywhere. They might have totem poles, yeah. statues of stuff they was worshiping even over in Egypt. So they worship it all around the world. Anything that was greater than them. Right. So if the fire came through the village and we lived out in bush and it took over the village, well we figured we better pray to the fire God. Yeah. So he won't be burning up our, our villages. Come on up in here. If the flood overtook us and we lived on the coast, yes, sir. well, we're going to start worshiping the God of the sea. Right. Right. But this is a story about a particular family and the God that that family worshiped. That's why it says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let me interject this. See, some things I, I have to be careful how I say it because I want it to be received well by everyone that may hear it past this room. Amen. Now, when it comes to certain geographical yes, locations Amen. and specific genealogies, the Bible, when it talks about the spirit of adoption, is not really talking about the children that descended from self. See, all through the Bible, it, it talks about inheritance. Bloodlines. Even when the prodigal son came to the daddy, he said, give me the portion of the good that befallen on me. He talking about his inheritance. So it's some things, because you're in the family, those who are in large families really understand this. If they got property or land or something that's been left behind, they can't do nothing with it till everybody get there and everybody agree on what we're going to do with it. Because it's everybody's inheritance. Are you listening to me? So when the Bible talks about adoption, he's he not talking about the folk that was originally in his family. See, I'm an original family member. I'm going to prove it to you. Genesis chapter 2. Start around verse 10. See, you're dangerous to the devil when you really know who you are. No, I'm going to say it. You are dangerous to the devil when you really know who you are. Amen. 
Yeah. See, I, I, I'm just sober for a minute. I'm laughing at Brian because you know, that thing hit him just a second ago. <laughs> See, it's funny to me when folks get blessed, get revelation. Uh, it's not a funny like I'm laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. I'm rejoicing because when, when your eyes come open, if I don't open one person's eyes, I've done my job for the day. All right, watch this, watch this, come on. Ready, let's start reading. Now, we're going to talk about this is where the Garden of Eden was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It no longer exists because now it's, it's past it, but this is where everything got started. So two things we're going to observe today is not only where it was, who were the people that inhabited it, but what continent it was on. Amen. What continent it was on. All right, start reading. Ready to read. Havilah. The term, the word is Halva. Halva was a son. I'm getting way ahead of myself right through here. Of this, you're gonna see another word in some of your translations of Cush. When Moses left Egypt, running from Pharaoh, now he comes out in this desert place, and he meets, meets this man named Ruel, which means king of the desert, who was also in that day the king of Jerusalem. Oh, I'm teaching. When he meets this man, man has a name, he calls him Cush. Let's keep reading. Halva was one of Cush's sons. Gihon was one of Cush's sons. I come from a place that called G's men. I imagine the man up there named was G, who owned all the land and all the property. Hello? So these lands were named specifically after somebody. Right up, right up Lot Road is a street called Henry Road. So I need to go chase the deeds and make sure that ain't none of my land. <laughs> Are y'all catching what I'm saying? Barlow Ben. Mr. Barlow owned the Ben. All via Alabama. Stay with me. Watch, now watch the colors that are going to be presented when we start reading. Okay. Read about Helen. Read to read. Where there's gold. And the, gold and the gold in that land is good. What, so the first color we got is what? Gold. First color is what? Gold. Keep reading. Bullion, bullion, bullion. That's a red stone. It almost looks like a ruby. So now we got gold and red. Keep reading. Keep reading. What color is the onyx stone? What color is the onyx stone? What color is the onyx stone? So now we got red, gold, black. black. And we talking about land. What color is land usually represented? Y'all be scared to say it. Ain't nobody up in here but us. What color is land generally represented by? Green. Say it. Green. Wow. Wasn't that word good? I told you. It's a life-changing word. You need to begin to tell people about this broadcast. Wherever you are, whatever time it comes on, in a minute, the announcement is going to come. You're going to see a scroll that's going to let you know all of the ways that you can contact us now. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on the Internet. We're on iTunes. Man, I'm telling you, we're all over the place, and we're trying to connect with you. So Word of Life is a need-meeting church, a church that's set up to meet all the needs of each and every level of your family. We got children's church. We got youth activities. We got activities activities for uh, middle ages and we got two activities for old folks like me. So if you're out there and you're looking for a good place to worship or finding a church home, consider Word of Life because I'm telling you, if you're getting blessed, just imagine what's happening that you're missing when you don't come to these services. Make time to come by and visit. If you're traveling in the summer or on your break time or on any holiday, stop in and share with us because we're going to bless you. In just a minute, my announcer is going to come and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until next time I should see you again, remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church, located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. 
Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here are the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store, going to the category titled new, and clicking on life television network. You can also tune in to Life Radio Network by going to the website www.tunein.com, going to the search bar, typing in Life Radio Network, and there you will find our station. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can tune in to us on 87.9 FM. You can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron, so there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need, I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Right now, I want to give you an opportunity to, to change your life. I know you've been going through things and, and you're saying, Preacher, uh, what can I do? Well, the first thing you need to do, if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, you need to invite Jesus in your life. I want you right now, wherever you are, stop whatever you're doing and pray this prayer with me. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open. Watch the road, but you can still pray. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you that your word declares that if I would confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. 
Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of darkness. That's right. I renounce the hidden works of darkness. Every allegiance with Satan. And I now ask Jesus to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I thank you that you come into my life and I receive my salvation right now. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I need you to write me, email us at the information on the screen because I want to put something in your hand. It's a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? It's only 16 pages, but 16 pages of power and understanding. You know, the scripture says wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Well, this book will give you some understanding. I want you to call, email, or write us, and we're going to send you a free copy of What is Salvation. After you get through with it, share it with some of your friends or your relatives. If you got a small group meeting at your house on Sunday for prayer meeting, go over each and every one of these steps. It's going to help them get a better foundation and a better understanding of what just happened in your life. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you to the family of God, welcome you to our family. And I want to encourage you to keep looking at us and watching and viewing us on this channel or internet, however you're receiving this broadcast right now. Because I'm telling you, you mean so much to me. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'll see you real soon. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless.